Everybody have their coffee? We're going to go through a lot of material very fast. Pay attention. My name is Mikhail Marin. I'm on the data team at Mapbox, sharing this presentation with Jennings Anderson, PhD student at CU Boulder. Had the, the pleasure of spending the last couple months uh, as Jennings has been a research fellow with us at Mapbox, um, digging into analysis and OpenStreetMap. And I was, um, I was really thrilled with Catherine's talk this morning, uh, laying out like the, the vision and the kinds of things we need to be thinking about as a community going forward. And in order to know where we're going to go, this is kind of a cliche, we need to know where we are. And a lot of the times I think the stories that we talk, tell about our community and the way we view our community, it's not, I'm not sure we exactly understand what's happening within OpenStreetMap, who we are and what happens every day. The OpenStreetMap database is huge and it's a humongous amount of data and we've barely scratched the surface of analyzing and interpreting it to pull out um, interesting insights that help us to tell stories which accurately represent who we are and where we want to go. You know, this is the kind of stat which we're very familiar with from the wiki page that shows registrations nearly, nearing three million and it does not really represent OpenStreetMap very well at all. It's very impressive, look at how much we're growing, but um, we're actually more around you know, 15,000 users editing every week. And this also looks impressive. This is, we have 3.5 billion nodes in the OpenStreetMap database. What does that mean? Why is that, is that, does, is, those could be, are those good nodes? Are they bad nodes? Where are they? And we have, there are definitely a lot of great tools for analysis within the community um, and a lot of great work. This is uh, one of Pascal Nice's uh, applications for looking at this kind of statistics in more detail and things like um, overview of uh, other users around you, open, overview of OpenStreetMap uh, contributors is really helpful to get a picture of your community. Um, but I feel like there's more to do to make these tools of analysis available to everybody. OpenStreetMap's a global project, but what really happens, what's really important is very, very local. And in order to tell stories which are very, very local about very, very local issues and local data, everybody needs to have access to analysis tools in order to derive those insights. Um, tools need to be easy to access. And we want, why do we want these numbers and these stories? Well, we want to know where we can improve the map more, where the community is doing well, where it could use more help. And as we go out and try to work to improve the map and improve the community, measure ourselves. It's very, if you like uh, do a mapping project, um, it's very hard, it takes a lot of work to analyze, well, how much impact, how much data was created, what was the quality, what was the follow-on impact to the community. Um, and you want these kind of numbers to do things like when new, member, when new mappers come on board and get very, very excited and very, very hooked into OpenStreetMap, say here in Seattle, the Seattle community would like to know, I imagine, who are these folks and how can I reach them and can you alert me immediately when someone gets hooked so that I can reach out and bring them, tell them about State of the Map US and all of the events that might be happening. Or someone who's been inactive and who's kind of drawn off of OpenStreetMap, how do you inspire them again to get involved? So numbers, we have a lot of numbers. Um, so we focus just on the US in this analysis. And here's a similar uh, graph to what we had before. We have growing on 300 million edits in OpenStreetMap in, in the US. Okay, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> We have 300 million edits in OpenStreetMap US. But where are they? What are they? Um, what does this actually tell us about the quality of the map and about where we need to do more work? This is the number of active users per week. And I was actually pretty um, pleased and surprised by this. Nearly 1,000 people every week edit OpenStreetMap in the, just in the US, I think is incredible. Over all of time, since the beginning of the project, nearly 70,000 people have edited something in OpenStreetMap. So that's, uh, that's, I mean, 
So 1,000 are active every week. Seven, what, what about the other 69,000 uh, editors? What, what happened to them? How can we reach them? Breaking it down by city starts to get interesting. Um, hopefully this starts to like trigger maybe some inter-metro competition. <laughs> but, uh, um, you can see San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, Washington, and Seattle coming in respectfully, respectably at number five in terms of number of active users. And then we started to look a little bit at, the, at uh, some of the, the features in particular. This is a, a graph um, per day, per week, kilometers of roads edited in OpenStreetMap starting in 2006. And you can see evidence of the Tiger import. And then these other spikes are subsequent, um, like global edits, so like street, uh, like the uh, name expansion bots and things like that. But then there's this, um, this kind of like lower baseline of more human editing. And what's, one thing that's been interesting, I think this builds a little bit off of what Alan, if you saw Alan's talk earlier, was, um, was examining. The blue line is, is the kilometers of roads that have been edited in OpenStreetMap have just been created in OpenStreetMap. Um, the green line is the number of roads which have subsequently been edited by someone else. So they represent another edit after the initial creation in OpenStreetMap. So you see in 2008 the Tiger import, and then it kind of, there's just a steady climb of new roads, but not so much since then. But sometime in 2013, we actually had more edits on roads than original creation of roads. And I think this says something about like the health and the quality of the community when some things have been edited again and again and again, that means that you, have, you can trust more in the quality the more, pe more people have looked at something and chosen to correct it. Um, now this now breaks it down by metro, and maybe unsurprisingly, it correlates very well with like, the size and the sprawl of, of the city. So um, you don't necessarily want to, Los Angeles is great. They have a lot of roads, but a lot of sprawl, yeah. A lot of roads to map in Los Angeles. Seattle, much more like compact and dense, and so there's you see overall there's been less roads map mapped in Seattle. Now buildings are interesting because there's this kind of echo effect from the initial structure of the road network. And once this road network is in place and we have reasonable confidence in it, um, later on that's when we start to see buildings. And it's much more spiky because there's been a number of building imports over, you know, over the past, since 2009. And it would be interesting to investigate further, well, what do these spike represents? What are the actual activities? What has actually happened in the community that has caused these, this kind of um, spiky growth? And it becomes very clear when you break it down by metro region. And uh, Los Angeles, in, just in 2016, has surged to the most densely mapped uh, in terms of buildings uh, with the, the LA uh, building import. Um, but you can see very clearly, like, buildings have been very much a a function of imports, and you can see when various communities have taken on building imports. I live in Washington, D.C. Oh, interesting. Well, we're not even in the, you know, in the top nine here. But um, you see some of the, imp like Boston, there were several stages of, of imports which happened. And unlike roads, there are 10 times as many new buildings being added than have been edited. So if you go back to roads, um, we're nearly 10, yeah, here this shows it. The, this is a ratio of the number of newly created kilometers of road versus edited kilometers of road and likewise number of buildings created versus edited. And you can see initially there's a, the ratio is m much higher for newly created roads, that's the green line. And then it quickly comes down to the point where we have at this point, 10 times as many edits to existing roads as creation of new roads. Um, buildings, there's 10 times as many new buildings added to OpenStreetMap than are edited. So are, what is, what's the future for buildings? Do we expect this just to be the pattern over time? Is there something about like, the, logistic, the logical structure of roads, which, mean, one minute, which means that they're likely to be more edited than buildings will be? Or will we see eventually like a downward trend on buildings as the map matures and we add more and more uh, detail to buildings. 
our approach. Tile, tiles are the unit of analysis. So much, so many tools understand tiles uh, for map display. We use tiles for analysis. We um, want to take an approach which uses open source tools, which use tools which are easily available, which don't require building big databases with OpenStreetMap data. So OSMQA tiles are vector tiles containing all of OpenStreetMap, pre-processed every day. You can download the whole and access the whole world. You can get country extracts. You can get historic extracts. And we use this um, at Mapbox in November. We did a road coverage comparison uh, globally, comparing miles of road against the CIA World Factbook to try to get a sense of how high quality, how comprehensive the road network is in OpenStreetMap. And so according to that, we are well beyond what the CIA World Factbook says we have. Um, well over 100% of the roads are covered, but um, that's not true. There's probably more roads that we have to edit. Um, so how can you discover intrinsic properties of the data which reveal quality when we don't have any external, we're, we're going to be the biggest database of geospatial data ever and the most current, we have nothing to compare to. How do we evaluate when we have good quality data? We have to look at structure of, of the data itself. Um, OSM Lint are open source tools that make use of OSM QA tiles and tile reduce to, this is just a little bit of code not to go into, but just to show it's small. So to write these kind of analysis scripts, it's very simple. A few lines of code and it runs insanely, insanely fast. And you can do all, I mean, the analysis Jennings was doing was incredibly speedy. Um, this approach has been incorporated in OSM Analytics, which is kind of a dashboard view on this kind of analysis. Definitely, if you haven't seen it, look at it and we're ha I'm happy to like walk you through it because it's not entirely obvious how you use it, but you select an area and you can see over time these kind of graphs in like well-defined areas. So this is Seattle. Along the bottom, it shows you very particularly when edits happened. And it does things like this. So let's swipe and see how many buildings were there before and after. This was um, somewhere, someplace in Ecuador, showing the number of buildings that were added after the, after the recent uh, disasters there. Okay, so looking at how we can determine things like uh, quality, um, coverage, um, and community within, within the data. Uh, so we have a couple different kind of metrics that you can think about with looking at quality. Um, you can look at the kind of data-driven approach like OSM Lint, which is going to um, kind of use the, use the data and identify known issues that we, that we find in it. You can compare to known sources like the CIA World Factbook um, and, and see if we have the coverage that we need. Um, you could do full qualitative analysis and sit down and look at every single tile and say, that's good, that's interesting. Um, and uh, that would, might take a while. Um, but what none of those uh, kind of metrics take into account is the user part of that. We have a, an extra piece of the, spa of the spatial data of OSM is that it's contributed by people. Um, there's a user account, there's a time, there's this kind of extra component of the data that makes it distinct from other geospatial data. So we want to uh, incorporate this aspect, the user aspect, uh, into the data to try to um, learn about the process of creation and what's the result that that has on quality uh, in the data um, that we see. So uh, one approach that we've also been taking, um, we've been doing a lot with the Towerdues framework um, and then doing a little bit with uh, Postgres and Jupyter Notebook and so we're able to kind of quickly iterate on some of these ideas that we have and see um, what the salient features are. So this was one of our first uh, visualizations that we put together. Um, so what you see here is kind of this heat map of the US uh, through the last 12 years, and this is looking at the density of editors. And so this is just a simple heat map that's going from like white to through yellow up to red based on the number of editors that are active on a given tile. Um, and so you see, uh, and, and all of these tiles have at least three editors active on them. And so you see these kind of hot spots emerge around our denser city areas. Um, somewhere in there after the Tiger import, you kind of see these like road networks uh, pop out where people are editing the roads and the highways. Um, so just this high level overview, you kind of already get this kind of pulse of what, uh, 
what the contribution activity looks like um, and where users are focusing their time. Um, so that's the, that's the where, uh, and then this is the when. And so this is showing um, when the edits are happening on the map uh, within any given year. So it's uh, going from light blue up to red depending on the month of the year. And so you can see in 2007 you have the, the Tiger import there and you notice it misses Texas and then Texas comes in in 2008. Um, and then these areas that are kind of maintaining in blue uh, have not then been edited later in the year. They, they were touched in the beginning of the year and then not edited later. So this gives you an idea of kind of the, the staleness, if you will, of the data through any given year. Um, and this gives us another kind of view to investigate. What, is that, what does that mean? We don't want to say that if something hasn't been touched, it's, it's you know, bad quality per se, but it's interesting that it'll, it, it shows us that this is, um, this is what the contribution activity looks like. So uh, now we want to kind of dive into that a little further. So we can use that to, to launch us off into some stories and looking at how the editing is taking place. So first, uh, let's take a look at the road story um, in the US. And to do that, uh, we've gone through and extracted um, edit histories for every OSM contributor um, through all of time. Um, and, uh, and then we've built some, some networks based on where users are editing on the same tile. And so here's the 2007 uh, network for um, the roads in the US. And so what we have here, we have the Dave Hansen Tiger account. Um, we have this kind of hub and spoke network. And all those other blue uh, nodes around the edges are users that have edited uh, on the same tile as the Dave Hansen Tiger account, um, at least 25 kilometers of roads. So we shouldn't be surprised here that we see, um, you know, the roads of the road network is going to have this hub and spoke structure starting with this account. Um, and then we can start to step that up. And now um, we go to 2008 and we see that that network is branching out. So um, we see that people are, are, are editing these roads and then building off of the next edits. And so uh, we see this kind of growing structure there. And that's at 25 kilometers of roads. And if we bump it up to um, a minimum of 100 kilometers of roads per uh, Z12 level tile, um, we see that we still have the hub and spoke network there in the, in the bottom left. Um, and then we see this other kind of network emerge. And that's actually the San Francisco network in 2008. Um, so these are, are users that are then editing on these same tiles. And so we kind of get this, this nice uh, co-editing network uh, that comes out that we want to explore more. Um, so that's looking at roads, let's look at buildings. So here's 2009, uh, starting in the Bay Area again. These are uh, edits of more than 40 buildings uh, on a given tile. Both users have edited at least 40 buildings on the same tile. And you already see kind of a different structure emerging. You see these kind of like smaller uh, dual networks um, popping up, there's smaller dyads. Um, and so then uh, let's step into 2010. Uh, this is always my favorite with OSM data. Um, 2010, the building network in North America and, and Central America, uh, we should be not surprised here to see this giant clump, uh, this, this big cluster here in Haiti, of course. And so this is the response to the 2010 Haiti earthquake where all these people are editing uh, together in that region. Um, and so that's looking at 40 buildings. Um, so let's go ahead and, and step into an example of trying to explore what this might look like uh, more at a, a kind of a local level. So 2012, let's look at one of these smaller, this is a, a, a clique here of four users uh, active in the Mississippi area. So then let's uh, start to explore some of their individual edits. Um, so exploring these users, we find this first user um, has 1.1 1 .1, uh, or 1,000 uh, edits in this in, on the map, and we see that 59% of their edits are actually happening on that single tile, and the rest of their edits are kind of in the surrounding tiles. So we have this user that's kind of, it's making over 1,000 edits to the map, uh, 1. Uh, 1,800 total, and so they're, uh, but they're mostly focused in this one area, which I think is very, very interesting. What does that tell us about that user in that area? Um, we can then look at this user, same thing. Uh, we have 700 edits total, and, um, 60 or 70 percent of them are happening uh, on that one tile. So we have this more kind of this central focused area. Um, and then we have this user who is also active here with 320 edits there uh, on that tile. But it's only 4 percent of their edits. This user has um, 7,000 7, edits total, 7.7, 7, uh, 100 edits. Um, and so if we look at where the majority of their edits are, uh, it's actually over in Germany. Um, and so they have this one tile with 21 percent of their edits. 
which I think is really is really interesting. That so so they've done some editing in the U.S. and we go and we look at this account and we find out that they're uh, very active with the Open Railways Map Project. Um, so they happen to also be editing over in uh, Mississippi. So um, so who are these editors? Well, that's that's one of them that's interesting that we have this German editor mapping in uh, Mississippi. Um, Looking at the surrounding tiles, this is back in Mississippi now, uh, we can find kind of the top contributors. And so here's this one user who has three edits on this tile. And it's always fun to find the users with few edits on a given tile because then when you look at all their edits, you see that uh, this user is very active in the south. And so they're probably doing a lot of kind of automated edits here uh, throughout all the, 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 the deep south here. Um, and so even though this user has 70,000 edits in this whole area, um, they when we then look at their kind of focus area, we find that they are focusing, these are just the three tiles of all those tiles that they're editing um, where they have more than 5% of their activity. So even though they're spread out, they have this kind of uh, central focus, which I think is really interesting that you find this across all users, um, or most users, every user we've looked at. Um, so because we're in Seattle, let's look at the Seattle story. Um, so here's the Seattle, the Seattle building network. Um, and so this is all the contributors editing over 100 buildings, and we shouldn't be too surprised that it's going to the it's going to be the Seattle import at the beginning, um, at the center, and then it's going to spread out. And those other two clusters are actually I want to say Chicago and New York, um, which is very just kind of interesting that those happen to be connected. Um, and so these are users that are that are involved in the in the bulk import processes um, and are going around and making edits on all these tiles. So. Uh, so this kind of opens up a, a lot of potential on how we can start to explore this data and take a look at who the contributors are and what's the, the result of looking at um, the kind of the mapping practices and, and, and what's the, what can we learn from how these practices are taking place uh, and what the resulting map looks like. So measure more in depth. Um, we want to look at, uh, we want to we keep building on this idea of map gardening um, and looking at you know, new versus edited, uh, et cetera. Um, and uh, ratios of you know, density of number of buildings and, and number of features looking at uh, compared to users. So again, all these new kind of metrics for looking at quality and coverage, but taking into account not just the features themselves, but the metadata of uh, the user uh, and, the, and, and when. Um, so I know that was a lot. <laughs> um, we have one thing for you to, to do yourselves. Um, we want to connect more demographic information about our community with the kind of edits we're making. So this is a small survey, the OpenStreetMap US Census. There's a URL, take you one minute to fill out. It's all, in, we're not releasing any publicly, you know, any identifiable information, but in aggregate, getting, looking at demographic information in our community and how that correlates with editing behavior is the goal. And we want to work together with everyone else who is interested in these kinds of questions, whether you want to help develop or whether you just want to ask really interesting questions. Um, there's lots of talks happening about analysis. Sterling is up in uh, six minutes. And tomorrow afternoon at 4 PM, there's another series of analysis talks, which are going to be great. Uh, today, at 4.45, in 107, we're going to have a birds of a feather to talk about, uh, in a little more uh, slow pace, the analysis work that we've been doing. And we really want to hear about what everyone else has been working on and what we can do together. And on Monday, we want to have a code sprint um, during the, the hands-on day focused on analysis tools. Um, that link will go to all of the interactive maps that Jennings showed. So you can go in, enter your own name, enter the names of your friends, explore your communities and actually um, step through all the way back to 2006 and see what you were editing back then and who else you were editing with. It's pretty, it's a lot of fun. Um, that is all, thank you very much. We maybe have time for one question. So next step. Yeah, we haven't we haven't looked at like any other um, sources of information in comparison, but I think it would be one thing I've talked to like Mike McGursky about is taking like WorldPop 
and look at population estimates, getting that down to a tile level, and then using that as how does that correspond to a baseline of the amount of edits you'd want to see in OpenStreetMap to say it's, it's quality. And that'll vary quite a bit, of course, depending on, the, on country and, and probably urban versus rural. But yeah, I think that should be interesting work. One more. We'll tweet it out too. Cool. Thanks very much.